Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophinet the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Behind enemy lines, we need to seize Red Lobinden, and we are in Angren, the infamous bogs of Angren. And the reason why I'm looking forward to this uh, chapter so much is that, aside from some cool monster designs like the, uh, the Glusty Warp that just killed one of our soldiers, uh, it's the fact that Meave's biggest chapter in the books actually plays out in Angren. So without spoiling too much, I'm uh, really, really hoping that they integrate everything from the books into this chapter or even a bit further than that in this game. So uh, looking forward to that, but, uh, but uh, I want to get my bearings a bit. So if we use the map... I can see where I actually can go without triggering anything else. Seems like I can go up as well. And then we need to go east. And that's probably the fort we were talking about. So if you look at the map, there's a lot of monster uh, artwork around here. Drowners, knackers and stuff like that. And a few birds. So the birds are on the nice side of the map. And then the monsters are on the, uh, the east side of the map. So uh, I'm wondering how good we'll do against those. But uh, yeah, before we head on, let's just check out up north. And actually, you know what? Let's just check the, our reports first so we can uh, gather a bit more intelligence. Report Angren. Angren partly under Nilfgaardian control. Black clad troops hold key fortresses and transportation arteries, but little beyond that. Swampy wilds remain uncharted, untamed. Count Caldwell rules Angren on behalf of the Emperor. Commands small division at Tuzla Castle, south of Swamps. Nilfgaardian troops also supervise log cutting operations, supplying their fleet. Further danger presented by monster attacks. Foul beasts present in Angren's wetlands in numbers far exceeding those found anywhere else. So the log cutting operation is also something that is present in the books. So uh, good on them to keep that detail going. And then we get a letter from Bruver Hawk himself. Neve, remember, the volunteers from Mahakam aren't to go without vittles, bevies or brawls. Don't be stingy, I'm paying. Make sure they don't chum around with your other troops more than the absolute minimum. Keep them segregated. I don't want any of your idiotic human fashions depraving might of decent dwarves and infecting the mountains when they get back. P.S. If you fight the black lads with the same mule-headedness you've shown me, they're in for a solid beating. Don't give up. So, again... Uh, I've been rereading the books and the chapter in Angren actually indicates that they are Dwarven Volunteers with Meave as well. So this is actually al also a thing that is confirmed within the books. And then our third letter from Captain Tobias. Your Majesty, you surely know already, Count Caldwell's been handed control of Angren. Your son Willem seized his chance to assert his independence. When General Abdeh is absent from the capital, the young prince pushes his own decrees through the Council of Peers. It's not for me to judge whether this all isn't according to some plan of the invaders. Yesterday, emissaries from Temeria and Kedwin came to court. I'm afraid they seek to cut a deal with the Nilfgaardians. If Redania joins them, the war will end and the enemy shall triumph. My lady, the North needs a victory. You must know your fight of the utmost is of the utmost importance. We need you now more than ever, Captain Tobias. So there we go. I don't think there will be anything around here. So, bridge on the Yaruga. Here we go. Let's check this out immediately. Seems like a nice Nilfgaardian encampment. With some rats. Hidden among brambles, Meave watched the Nilfgaardian sentries atop the palisade. In full gear, alert in stance, they looked sharp and ready to defend the stronghold. Blast! Meave hissed, for she now knew Red Lobinden would not fall by surprise. A siege would be needed it would slow her advance. Yet there was naught she could do, as this was her one road to Angren and to Caldwell. Raynard wiped the sweat from his brow, donned his helmet, and dropped his visor with a tap. On your command, your majesty. Um, order your force to attack Red Lobinden. Very well. We mustn't delay. Raynard, our plan of attack. Armoured infantry to lead and take the first salvo upon their breast, scaling ladders to follow. Afterwards, masterful, truly masterful, interrupted Gascon. Yet, despite the mastery, fit to be improved. How namely? Hold back your force. Lie in waiting. I'll take ten good men and open the gates for you. Wide. 
And how do you aim to achieve this? Asked Reynard. Knock, and claim to be a trinket peddler, I suppose. Or perhaps one of Lebioda's devout disciples. Must you know every last detail? Where's the fun in that, sir? There's none in warfare. Never, seethed Reynard. For war is no farce. Your Majesty, he stands no chance. Not the slightest. None at all, I concur. Yet his eagerness intrigues. Let's see what he can do. Ooh, we don't even get a choice there. Reynard did not approve of Meave's decision, this was clear. Yet he dared not undermine it. The Queen's blessing now his, Gascon assembled a small force and set off straight for the stronghold gate. Lambs to the slaughter, muttered Reynard, shaking his head. My Queen, it's not too late. We can always... Shh! Look. And... Already at the gate, Gascon lifted his arm in a gesture of peace, then merrily bantered a bit with the guards. A moment later, the gates jerked into motion. But how? No matter. The gate stands open. We must attack. Meave raced off towards the fortress without even glancing back. She knew well her soldiers would follow. There we go. Gascon did his work and we didn't even get a choice there, which is interesting because I felt like Rainer doesn't doesn't really like the fact that we're starting to trust Gascon more and more. The guards continued their attempt to close the gate, but Gascon's men quickly disposed of them, trusting their knives between gaps in the heavy plate. The Lyrians raised their fists in triumph and cheered, but Meave was quick to silence them. The celebration was premature. True, the invaders lost the tactical advantage, but had not yet been defeated. So, shortened battle, and it is a forced story battle, so those are usually easier than the rest. Oh wow, there are a lot of uh, units on the field as well. Okay, but half of them are ours actually. So, uh, we have infiltrators, so they boost this unit by the combined power of adjacent units and move them back. Every turn, it boosts adjacent units by one of this head armor. And then, every two turns, the turn start to destroy a random Nilf Guardian ally. If me passes, move to the other side of the battlefield. So that's going to happen once, I suppose. Or does he continuously switch around? That would be interesting as well. And then the Fire Scorpion damaged an enemy by two if it was destroyed, spawn fire on the row. Which is not something we're going to accept, is it? So usually... Oh, I look at the board. It actually looks really cool with the, the wood underneath. Left, um, right, and what does left, the leader do? Every right. four turns on turn start, draw a card if you are losing. Fair enough. Ah! And we get actually Golden Froth on the first time there, which is interesting. There we go, we get our Infiltrators back. And knowing that Golden Froth is close... I mean, I passed, but Rainer didn't move back. Ah, but we didn't pass completely. Yeah, that's, that's of course obvious. Um, Let's just... Move the war wagon next to the... Although, does he play cards? He plays the top unit from your deck, not the, the top card. So I don't need to fill that up completely just yet. Uh, so let's just put the Grey Rider over here. Without hesitation. Then the Regiment Drum. So these guys, strength sell by two whenever an enemy unit appears on the ranged row. There we go. And... Again, there we go. Again. It's not too late to walk away. Oh, and they're actually boosted twice because of the Grey Rider. That is annoying. Gascon might take those out. There we go. And those actually summon a copy from the deck. Okay, fair enough. Should be able to take those out in a second. So, um. Let's start off with Alzu's Thunder. All of these guys. And then the turn. And Gascon keeps killing units, so that's fine. Order! Whenever an ally appears, gain a charge. Fair enough. Then I think we should take advantage of the fact that we have the Lady Lance Connect here. Game. Then use Meave's ability to pull something nice. Let's just get the other drummer out, because of course we're gonna get uh, more and more uses out of that. So, Regiment Drummer. 
There we go. Let's put that down here. Army's wasted time for them like me. And then the war wagon up top. Carny battles. Hungry like a wolf. Which fire. will allow us to do something about that later. So end the turn. So if I want to take out, I need to be careful here. Your life is mine now. So they're focusing on Isbel. That is interesting that they keep focusing on Isbel despite the fact that she's, well, doesn't have a really clear ability, probably for the AI, I mean, but uh, yeah, interesting nonetheless. So let's put the Rivian Onagy on the field and get him boosted. Uh, we're gonna wait with the rest. One more turn. So he's starting to discard cards for some reason. Don't know why. Ah, and they're focusing Audible on triumph. the images. It must triumph. Wow. Okay. Stop, 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 stop. Jesus. Marry Joseph Christ. I only loot corpses. And I think we're gonna take the Grey Rider with us. So let's just grab those two and boost the forager with that. Then we have four times three damage we can do, which should be focused on one of the attackers there. So let's just kill the fire scorpion. There we go. Taken out one of the Fire Scorpion and reduced that guy's health to pretty much nothing. And then end the third. Next up we're gonna try and pull Raynard. We can do that. With the Onager still alive, that would be nice. But I'm gonna assume that they're gonna kill the Onager now. Yep, yeah, there we go. The AI is well, very well first in which units actually are not the most, uh, well, they are the most threats to, to him. Ah! Or to it, so to speak. Um, so, rain it. There we go. And pull him with the regiment drummer. And we get him over here I'm and then she's doing. an arbalest. Arbalest uh, for, is Don't that eight go. damage? I think he counts himself with it, right? There we go. Then we get the forager on these two light infantry units. There we go. Then um, a regiment drummer with an arblast over here, which is six Give damage. And then the Aratusa adapt I can use to get me. more drummers out of uh, the deck. Although we're doing good on that front as well. And then if I play the blacksmith, I think I'm going to play the blacksmith, right? Yeah, the blacksmith. We can play also Thunder again. And attack the black infantry Arbalest over here. And kill two units having the... Well, there we go, 25% of his health twice gone for the Nilf Guardian champion. And... And the turn. There goes another one, and of course that if affects that champion as well, the com commandant. A shame I have no time. Spying. Every two turns on turn start, move this unit one row towards the opponent. Blizzard. So that, I have no idea what that does. That does that. And then Becker's Twisted Mirror is gonna damage my own units. Yeah, that's not good. That, that is definitely not good. Okay, never mind. Um, I can end the turn if I want to. Just gonna pull one more unit. Yeah, another Grey Rider. Crap. As you command. Grace be to the great side! Oh, but we got another one of that. Those. First, gonna use the Lance Connect on the Pikeman. Once. And then I can do nine damage. Um, the pikeman, there we go. So that takes out another pikeman. And that's about it. Yeah, yeah. 
So that guy is gonna move forward, but... But, but, but... No buts. If I use me, Warhammer... I think uh, if I just keep that order, I should get another Forager, but... No, no, I can't because I, go I don't have space anymore. So I need to use the Forager right now as my only card to get up there. Then use the Drummer to put that Forager in between the Grey Rider and the guy that's going to swap sides otherwise. And grab him. Then the War Wagon, sadly with no not much uses. Over here. You can try to win them all, but you won't. And then we can use the Lyrian Lance Connect to damage the Imperial Enforcers three times and get the champion with them as well. And pass. Now we're up to the mercy of the game. So they get all damage. Uh, I think Gaskell might actually take out one of them. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. On that actually pretty easily. Thank you, Gascon. Gascon seemed a fiend as he fought his way to the keep, then single-handedly killed the commander. Suddenly leaderless, the Nilfgaardians laid down their arms. My, my, Gascon. Color me surprised. Pleasantly so, I trust. Don't fish for compliments, it doesn't suit you. Besides, you know you deserve both medal and title. <laughs> I shall hold you to it, my queen. In due course. But I must know how. What ruse persuaded the North Guardians to open the gate? Come, come. My delightful charms, no ruse. Ah, oh, I see. Not one to share secrets. Unremarkable, as I see it. I'd hold my tongue too, were my conscience thus burdened. I've done now to hide my shameful past, friend. I was a brigand, indeed, yet. Do not dare take me for a fool. You know of what I speak. Yet I don't. Reynard, what is this? What the devils is with you? Your Grace, in Mahakam, the Nilfgaardian letter we managed to intercept. Consider your offer accepted. Direct Meave and her force to the agreed site. We await their arrival. Your reward shall be as agreed. It was Gascon who told us Caldwell had received Angren to rule. It was Gascon who suggested we ride for Lobindon. Here, the Blackclads willingly opened the gate, for they expected him to deliver a prisoner. You! Um... We need to make a decision now. That is harsh. Um... I don't think it is. I mean, both of these statements are very black and white. Either you say, I don't believe it, or you say, yes, I might have expected this, so... Straight up agreeing with him or straight up denying his claim. So this is basically me choosing between Gascon or Reynard. So either I... I mean, I can't, right? I can't condemn Gascon without any sort of proof. We know we have a mole. That doesn't mean it's... Yeah, it must mean. It must mean that it's, it's, it's either one of them. But of course, if Reynard is the mole... Then he would have the more most benefit out of claiming Gascon is the bad guy. And of course, Gascon is a bad guy, but this is the Witcher universe we're talking about. Not, nothing is ever black and white. So I'm gonna go for impossible. I don't believe it. So uh, I'm sorry, Reynard. I don't. I don't believe this. No, it, it cannot be. Deny it, Gascon. Go on. Tell me I'm wrong. Do you require any more proof, Your Grace? What do they promise you? Amnesty? Coin in heaps? Ah, uh, both. And oh, you wow. Your guard wouldn't parley with me as a matter of course. To be treated seriously, I needed something they valued. A stroke of luck, it was, the chance to free you from Coldwell's grip. It was in Edurn that we first spoke. Then came to an understanding after Rosberg's fall. Why do I still live then? Why not snatch me under Knight's mantle? Drag me to Red Lobindon in chains? Leave. I sought to sell you out, I did. And aimed to gain by it. Yet in Edurn, you earned my respect. In Mahakam, my admiration. I swore then, I wouldn't follow the terms of the accord I'd made. Instead, I'd let you into the fort. And make damn sure the Commandant couldn't reveal the truth. Yeah. 
Okay. Alas, seems I underestimated Reynard. Flattery will get you nout. You, sir, are a traitor. Oh, please, friend. You appear to me a pot that calls the kettle black. Okay. And his face seems to reveal that he's actually right. Do not pull the wool over my eyes. Reynard, what is he talking about? Reynard? What does he mean? I've no notion, Your Grace. Not the slightest. Truly? <laughs> and I had you pegged for a man of honor. Come now, Reynard. Who sent secret missives to Willem? Go on, you really should tell your queen. What? Reynard? His Highness guest chambers in Mahakam. One of my lads snuck in. Found a letter bearing the signature of one Reynard Odo. Reynard, I beg you. Say it's not so. Tell me it's a filthy lie. Uh, I, uh, your grace. I'd hoped his highness and you would reconcile. To see son stand against mother rent my heart. I, 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 I wish to help. Behind my back. Your majesty, I sought merely to push the youth to see reason, to open his eyes. So say you now. Yet I can't know what was in the letters. I can't know what pacts you made. And alas, I can no longer take you at your word. I'm not alone in having deceived. Yet I am in repairing my wrong. Me felt a tempest rise inside her. Yet she could not release it lest it cloud her view. She would solve the problem, strike it from her mind, and resume her journey at once. Okay. Which means what exactly? What choice do we have to make? I shall look past these betrayals this once. I no longer wish to see you. Gascon, alas, Reynard, our pots thus part and out of my sight, both of you. It is a risk, of course, if I take out both of them. Ooh. Wow. I mean, I'm guessing most, pretty much everyone will just say, okay, I shall look past these betrayals this once. But what if it happens again? I feel Reynard... I understand Reynard, he's, he, Willem is his rightful king now, and even though he's loyal to Meave as well, he, he's torn between the mother and the son. And Gascoigne, of course, well, was a brigand when we first accepted his help, so it makes sense that he started out. He didn't free Meave out of the kindness of his heart, uh, so that makes sense. But now that he's stopped this from happening, I feel like we can trust him a bit more. I believe him when he says we've earned his respect. I'm more afraid of Reynard, actually. But you know what? I shall look past these portrayals. I don't want to cut off any storylines just because of uh, a little betrayal. Let's say for this for this decision, I made, I made one of my own and not as Queen Me for one. So I shall look past these betrayals. Drawn and quartered, I should have you both. Yet in truth... I cannot do without your aid. Now more than ever. Tis the one reason I show mercy and forgive. Your Grace. Perhaps made with doubt, but tis the right decision. I shall prove it. Thank you. Reynard and I rarely see eye to eye. But under the circumstances, I second his every word. Oh, shut your damn traps. And I believe you're needed in the wagon train. Now! The Queen's wish was clear and fierce. Gascon and Reynard slid off, leaving Meave to her thoughts. From the Palisades rampart, Meave gazed out over the marshlands across the Aruga. The Queen sighed deeply. She expected great challenges in Angren. She had also expected, even hoped, to find the one traitor in her midst. But two, and both her close aides de camp. She felt a weight upon her heart now. Blasted all, she muttered. Not the first dagger I've taken in the back. Likely not the last either. Yet to pity my lot will help not at all. I love the voice actress of Queen Meave. She's amazing. From the captive Nilfgaardians, Meave learned Caldwell was a Tuzla castle, in Angren's very heart. A small detachment would remain at Red Lobindon, while the Queen, with the rest of her force, set off to face the treacherous Count. There we go. So the next target Mom, is Count Caldwell. I must speak to you when you find a free moment. Oh, let's have a look. Cause yeah, we didn't check out the camp before. Uh, so 
Ooh, yeah, of course. New conversation options with pretty much everyone. Gabor is gone, obviously. So let's start from left to right and have a little chat with Isabel. I'm pleased to see you again, Mom. You need something. You wish to speak with me? In private? Yes, Mom. I've given thought to certain matters. The time's come to explain and reveal my decisions. I've not been entirely honest, but I've seen you very much deserve the truth. You're brave, wise, and above all, you've a good heart. And thus you're unlike any other ruler I've ever met, had dealings with. Isabel, what is it you wish to say? You're starting to worry me. I told you of Sintra and Sodden. Do you recall? It's true, I took part in that war. Yet, I fought for the Empire. What? I'm not certain I understand. So remember I told you guys that her card in Gwent is actually called differently. So she introduced herself as Isbel of Traitor Gore, if I'm not mistaken. But in the Gwent game, her card is actually called Isbel of Hage. And Hage, I think, is a province of Nilfgaard. My name is Isbel Eb Muirmos of Nilfgaard. And there's the accent. I wish I could say I am from a conquered province. I wish I had that luxury. But no, I hail from the city of the Golden Towers itself. Oh, never mind. Even from uh, Nilfgaard itself. Because yeah, Nilfgaard is a term we use for everyone from the Empire, which is humongous. But the city of the Golden Towers itself is also called Nilfgaard. So technically only people that live there are Nilfgaardian. Everybody else has just been conquered. My, I'd certainly not expected that. Please, tell me more. I went straight from the academy to the army, as majors do in Nilfgaard. Yet I truly believed our aim to be to build a better world. With our help, the mages, the Emperor conquered realm after realm, right up to the Amal Mountains. Yet he was not sated, and turned his greedy eyes to the north. But the north stood and faced him. I'll never forget the bloodbath he wrought in Sintra. It was unspeakable. He sought to intimidate us. He united us instead. Indeed. At Sodden, when chaos engulfed the Imperial Army, I saw my chance to flee the madness and begin life anew. And I did just that. I never sought thereafter to rejoin my countrymen or return to my home. Instead, I stayed in the north and swore never again to use my magic to harm others. Yet I cannot stand idle as the Emperor perpetrates atrocity after atrocity. I wish to fight at your side. Okay, and you're welcome to stay. All deserve a second chance. Yet from now on, there are to be no more secrets between us. Certainly. I thank you. You've no idea what this means to me. You know what, that's actually a concept we haven't talked about before. Mages and sorceresses in Nilfgaard are actually prohibited from doing anything else but join the army. They're all serving the Empire, the Emperor himself. Good. Oh, and Isbel, this must stay between us alone, for your own sake. I appreciate the concern, Mom, but you needn't worry about me. I've lived for some time in the North, and dare say I know how to get by. There we go, and Isbel Healer has changed to Isbel Destroyer. That is interesting. Tell me more about Nilfgaard then. The city of the Golden Towers. Don't think I know any soul who's seen it with her own eyes. Did you know many common folk believe they're made of real gold, the towers? Yet they're named for how the southern sun dances off their rooftops. My family lived in the capital long before Nilfgaard was ever an empire. The city is of great beauty, was always a source of pride, turned arrogance in time. When I was but a lass, my father would take me to the grand amphitheater to watch the gladiators fight. A daughter of Nilfgaard 
should grow accustomed to the sight of blood, he said. For to conquer the world was our destiny. Dreadful. He must have hated it. At the time, I saw nothing wrong in it. I admired the gladiators for their bravery, skill, finesse. Though now it shames me to admit it. Okay. So there we have a little bit of backstory about Nilfgaard itself. So thank you, Duty Isabel. Calls. I must go. Of course. Should you need me, I'll be here. Thank you, Isabel. So there we go. Changed one card into another. Let's uh, keep our two traitors until last. And let's talk to Xavier. Yes, my lady. I haven't had the opportunity to thank you. Had you not been so alert, we'd have fallen to our deaths in Mahakam. I merely did my duty, Your Majesty. <laughs> Modest as ever. Yet once the war is over, I shall make certain you're properly rewarded. My lady, the one reward I desire is victory. Your victory. Okay. So, and that's all there is to it. So thank you, Xavier. He's a good and poor man. The matters await my attention. We shall speak later. Look at him. As you wish, my lady. He just keeps biting on through, doesn't he? Despite his, uh, his physical, yeah, disabilities. Poor man. So, Barnabas, another guy who saved our lives. You need my help with anything? Anything at all? I've ideas aplenty. Ever traveled with an army before? Frankly, can't say that I have. You folk are my first. And let me say, it's not nearly as dull as I expected. Your traveling companions are fascinating. Truly. Is that so? Who, if I might ask? Um, let me think. Then there's that aged woman. Isabel, is it? Oh, your grace, a complete lunatic, that one. Did you know she believes the world to be round? Round! Like an egg! <laughs> well, an egg is not exactly round, but yeah, Barnabas. Mm. Uh, and just between the two of us, the quiet chap, Xavier, gives me the willies truth be told. Could just the be on account willies. of his face looking like a piece of taffy stuck to the sole of a boot. <laughs> Who else? Uh, oh, right. A word of advice. Never play Gascon at cards. He's a hustler, that one. And he tells tall tales. Um, about debts, specifically. Ones that I supposedly owe him. And the Reynard fellow. <laughs> what a jester. Always good for a laugh. I'm sorry, what? Every day he barks at me, standard attention, with a perfectly straight face. And last, he asked them, um, <laughs> asked if I'd served in the Norm Army. <laughs> I mean, really. Sometimes I just can't with that man. <laughs> Very thorough, Barnabas. I thank you. Oh, that was awesome. I like Barnabas. I like Barnabas. Time I attended to other matters. Hmm? Ah, yes, you're still here. Off you go, then. Yeah, goodbye, Barnabas. So, let's start with Reynard first. We need to have a little heart-to-heart uh, -heart here. Grace, I wished once more to express my gratitude for your show of mercy. I showed mercy, true, but felt much more. Anger, pain, now resentment. Disappointment. You hurt me, Reynard. Wounded me to the bloody core. I don't know what else to say on the matter, so let's not speak of it. As you wish, Your Grace. So, uh, ooh, why are the Nilf Guardians so cruel? That's a weird question to ask Reynard. Reynard, you fought in the first war against Nilfgaard, did you not? Yes, Your Grace. Though, as a mere captain then. Were they equally cruel? Did they scorch fields, turn peasants into slaves? No, Your Grace. They fought with honor in those days. So, what's happened? Why the change? It's said Emperor Emir Va Emrys's heart hardened over the years. He's grown crueler, more ruthless. His soldiers' zeal for violence has followed suit. But you don't say that. No, Your Grace. To your mind, why do they now despise us as they war against us? It is ever easier to loathe those you know. Before the first war, they knew nothing about us. Then they saw they had the better weapons, larger cities, superior craft. But in our towns, waste flowed through the streets in open gutters, and they concluded we weren't their equals. It's far easier to kill when one holds such a belief. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, see you later. It's time Greenet. I attended to other matters. 
It sounded actually a little bit different than before as well, but Gascon. I must say it again, I'm sorry. And I thank you for forgiving me. No need to say any more, Gascon. But you've got to know. Every time you bring it up, I'm tempted to change my mind. Now let's turn to the task at hand. Okay, ever regret your bandit life? Ever have regrets? Feel remorse? For what? Oh, I don't know. Killing innocents, perhaps? Murdering travelers, pilgrims? I've always warned them. Won't touch a hair on your heads, provided you don't resist. So, see? Gave them a choice. Besides, innocents? Please, Maeve. We both know those to be mythical creatures. Everyone's got something on their conscience. So there's always call for murder? That's right. Dead right. You need but answer it. Okay. That's not a good sentiment, Gascoigne. You're not uh, confirming my decision here, Time but... I attended to other matters. Farewell. Goodbye, Gascon. Uh, an egg? My soul rejoices, Your Grace, to see you at full health and in high spirits. Egg just seems to be happy to be here. And why would I not be? I heard you spoke with Prince Willem in Mahakam. An exchange, I've no doubt, fraught with difficulties, peppered with many a hurtful word. Oh, none worse than those he spoke in Lyria when he ordered me placed in chains. What I felt then... Why, I dare say you'd have trouble imagining it. I've no need to imagine, Your Majesty. This feeling, I... I know. I don't oft speak of him, but I, too, have a son. Oh. Or more to the point, had a son. Siegfried, his name. Interesting. He passed on, has he? No, Your Majesty. Worse. He's renounced me. When an illness affected his mother, my wife, Sophia, he implored me to earn coin for her betterment. But I had vowed long ago never to take payment from those I protect. I could not. It would be a stain on my honor. Ah, apologies, Your Majesty. Of what concern to you can my petty troubles be? They are, Ake. Believe me. And I thank you for confiding in me. I wish to discuss another matter, but it can wait. I shall come back later. Oh. And what is that? Your Grace. Okay, I can't. Farewell, Ake. Interesting. I don't know what she's talking about. But that was a nice bit of backstory for Egg, because he wasn't indicated that he that he had some more conversation options. But uh, there we go. I'm just going to take one more look at Isbel Destroyer, which is actually moved from our deck as well. Isbel Destroyer damage enemies at random by the total damage taken during this battle. I feel like healing was more interesting, but there we go. Destroyer. Uh, and that actually still gives us 11 points because, of course, we lost uh, Gabor. So there we go. With that done, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And uh, I hope to see you guys in the next episode where we'll continue to, uh, well, explore Angren a bit. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.